Hello everybody, it is Emery48 here and welcome back to part 2 of Star Wars Republic Commando Hard Contact by Karen Travis. As a reminder, this book takes place in 22 BBY in month 3 after the Battle of Geonosis. In part 1, we went through chapters 1 through 10, so we will pick up in this video in chapter 11. Darman blew up a hillside to escape the chasing droids. The explosion deafened Etain. She was able to influence two droids looking over the edge of the exploded hill, convincing them that the people they were chasing had escaped. Darman healed her injuries and sprayed Etain's damaged ear, learning that the Jedi could curse in Hatties. Niner made it to Teklet and blew up the ground station, which I'm pretty sure runs the communications on Kylura for the Trade Federation. Hoken has realized the clones have done the same he would have done, knock out communications before an assault. He is recalling all droids as the droids communicate without the receiver in Teclet. Chapter 12. Coruscant sent a message to the Republic ship Majestic in Kylera space, allowing it to stop any non-Republic ships from landing on the planet. Niner was able to communicate with his squad over long range once again, he has stolen a speeder and is heading towards the squad. Darman helped train Etain in sword combat during the night as a way of staying warm. He also explained much of the life of the clone and their training to Etain. Hoken has sent Uthan back to the facility because that can be better defended than Ankit's home. The mansion is still being fortified to keep the attacking force guessing of where to actually attack. Hoken has also set up explosives in the wine cellar of Ankit's mansion. Chapter 13. An armed Techno-Union vessel has arrived in Kylera space and is being monitored by the Majestic. Etain and Darman have met up with Niner, Phi, Aten, and their prisoner, Gutene, at the rendezvous point. The group planned their attack with Jinart. They are sending Gutene back to Hoken with misinformation. He will tell Hoken... They have around a dozen men, and they are going to attack the villa. However, their plan is to attack the villa with a remote explosive while actually attacking the facility, as Janart revealed that Uthan had been moved back to the facility and the villa is merely a decoy. Chapter 14. Uthan revealed to Hokan that the nanovirus is not complete, and they have not figured out how to separate who it attacks from clones and humans, because clones are human. So there are a lot more in danger, including Hoken and Uthan, if something were to go wrong. Gutene has arrived at the facility. Omega Squad and Etain moved to their launch point for the attack and made final preparations and had their final meals. Gutene told Hoken all of the misinformation he had been fed. Hoken killed him anyway, but took all of the new details into consideration. Chapter 15. Padawan Barden Jusik addressed the Jedi Council, asking if their use of clones is morally ethical. Jinnar has placed cameras in view of both the laboratory and the villa for the clone's use. She has also entered the villa as a boy carrying a fruit basket to plant the remote explosives in the wine cellar. Uthan has requested that Hoken get one of the clones alive as a test subject. Omega Squad came up with their final plan, Darman and Aten will infiltrate the lab from the drain system and fight their way out while Phi and Niner lay down fire from outside. Etain will be ready to guide them to the extraction point. The Majestic is also able to fire at the lab and the villa if needed. Chapter 16. Janart led Darman and Aten through Gadan tunnels. Once they were under the facility, Janart left them to dig in. Darman and Aten, after an hour, have dug through and drilled into a sewage pipe. Phi and Niner fired upon the facility's front door and detonated the explosives in the villa. They have also contacted the Majestic to take out any droids moving from the villa to the facility. They destroyed 20 droids that were posted outside the facility and predict 20 to 30 more inside. Etain had used the force to keep metal debris from hitting anyone after the explosions. Darman and Aten do not know what items in the fridge are the virus, uh, so they have left it with remote detonation charges to implode them. They left the central room and fought off some droids. They have been sealed in with Uthan. 
Chapter 17. The blast doors went down because of the breach in the central chamber. Hoken is also trapped within the facility and cannot override the controls. Aten and Darman have breached the room Uthan was locked in, killing some Trandoshan guards. Aten and Darman have captured Uthan and killed four other scientists. They are taking her back through the tunnels they came in through. Hirati, one of Hoken's officers, was able to jam the doors open instead of leaving them jammed closed. Hoken found the dead scientists and guards and the missing Uthan. Hoken has found the remaining surviving scientists. They said the only person that had the key to the box with the vials of virus was Uthan. Hoken then found the hole to the drain the clones used to breach the facility. Chapter 18 Etain used the force to dig up some of the tunnel, making Darman and Aten's escape quicker through the tunnels. Hoken is going to attempt to relocate the scientists that survived before going after Uthan. Chapter 19. Two Trade Federation warships are on approach in Kylera space. Phi and Niner saw Hoken come out with a couple others. They fired and at least one ran around the wall of the facility. Niner and Phi ran clear of the building and Darman set off the charges, blowing up the lab. Only one of the scientists survived the shots from Niner and Phi. Hoken and Hirati also survived and are trying to find Uthan, as all of the nanovirus was destroyed in the explosion. Hirati drive by Aten, wounding him. Darman shot and killed Hirati as he drove away. Uthan was injured by debris from Aten's armor, but she will survive. Darman is carrying Aten after putting some medical first aid on him, and Etain is carrying Uthan. Niner and Phi have engaged Hoken. Hoken EMP'd them, wiping out their HUD displays in their helmet and their communication abilities. Niner is going to fake an entry to try and lure Hoken in so Phi can kill him. Chapter 20. Darman and Etain returned Uthan and Aten to the gunship. Master Zay met them. Etain refused to leave, threatening to destroy the gunship if they abandoned any men. Niner's cry of pain faded in Hoken. As he bent down to finish the kill, he heard a lightsaber come from behind. Etain killed Hoken. Her master's lightsaber was returned to her, and Phi took Hoken's Mandalorian helmet. Etain and Omega Squad made it back to the gunship. Omega Squad took off with the gunship and returned to the Majestic to be reassigned for the next mission. Zay is taking Etain as his Padawan, and they are staying on Kylura to continue working discreetly. That's the end of the book. I've got to say the first four or five chapters, so in part one uh, of this book, was difficult to get through. But this second half was really good. A lot of good action. The book flowed really well. Overall, the book ended up being a very enjoyable read. It's just weird that the first couple chapters were kind of a slog uh, and made the first impressions of the book more negative than the overall impressions once I finished. Uh, I know there are more books in this series, and I'm now actually looking forward to reading those, whereas before, uh, I was a little wary of reading those. I'm hoping we get to continue seeing Omega Squad's story, considering it is a Republic Commando book. I'm assuming we won't be seeing too much more of Etain, who will be staying on Kylura. Uh, but hopefully we can stick with Omega Squad. Thank you everyone so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.